بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us. Indeed, it brings a smile upon the face to see faces that are smiling as well. So alhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this smile in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, we need to constantly make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst the best to our spouses and family members. Because the litmus test, if you want to test how good a person you are, you need to ask yourself one question. What do my family members think of me? That's it. In terms of character and conduct, you would have the answer. In terms of the closeness to the Almighty, you would have the answer. If they are reasonable people who are Muslims, there would be no reason why they would hate you or dislike you or be uncomfortable in your presence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us assets to our wives, to our husbands in the case of the women, to our children, to our parents, to our in-laws, to our families, to our communities inshallah. The topic I have chosen today is not connected to the family. The topic is connected to falsehood and lies. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from falsehood and lies. If you notice, and I have been noticing it for the first time in my life, we always knew the Quran was a miracle. But it is amazing that every topic you pick up is covered from almost every angle you can think of in the Quran, in one way or another. That is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. This is why the Quran is the miracle of this ummah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and has challenged entire creation to even come up with something close to the Quran. If only we realize the power of this book. Let's take a look at how systematically the Quran has discussed falsehood and lies. May Allah protect us from falsehood and lies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how big the sin of lying is. In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a certain lie that inshallah we will mention a little bit later in this talk. Then Allah says, كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَذِبًا Allah says, what a big statement has come out of their mouths. What a dangerous statement. How serious is the statement that has come out of their mouths. They are indeed uttering falsehood. May Allah protect us from falsehood. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that it is a sickness. Lies is a sickness and it will continue to grow. If it is not clipped and nipped in the bud, if a person does not repent and leave the bad way and habit of lying and being false, then Allah says it will continue and it will become a disease in the heart. It will be impossible for a person not to lie at a certain stage. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of in Surah Al-Baqarah. But before we speak of that, let me inform you that a person becomes enslaved by lies. When someone utters a lie, they become a slave of that lie and then they become shackled in the lie and they don't know whether to move right or left. They are cornered and they've got to lie a million and one times in order to come out of that one lie. Subhanallah. And for this reason, it is important that we free ourselves from lies because truthfulness is what will save you. To be honest and to be truthful is what will save you in the dunya as well as in the akhirah and is what will save myself as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ 
in their hearts is a sickness and Allah will increase for them that sickness if they don't turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says for them will be a severe punishment because of their lies may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from lies then Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala that when a person lies a liar has certain qualities what are some of the qualities of a liar the first thing they always swear big oaths when they are telling you some small information. Allahu Akbar. I swear, I'm telling you, I can touch the Quran for you. I can do this for you. Oh, wallahi, billahi, tallahi. They will tell you, I swear by Allah. I swear by this and by that. And yet they are lying to you. May Allah protect us. One who is truthful does not need to say that. Everyone will know this man is truthful. If he tells you there is a fire there, he's got to say, you know what? There's a fire on that side. The world will listen and the world will already take it as an instruction. May Allah protect us. But when a man cries wolf, wolf every time, the day there is a real wolf, nobody will come to his assistance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from those who lie. So a liar, one of the signs is they swear by Allah and still they are lying. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah at tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَوْ إِسْتَطَعْنَا لَخَرَجْنَا مَعَكُمْ يُهْلِكُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ Allah says, they will take a qasam, they will swear an oath that if we could, we would do this and we would do that. But Allah knows that they are liars. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those. In Surah Al-Mujadala, the Prophet uh, Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a certain incident and then he speaks about those who lied in the dunya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيَحْلِفُونَ عَلَى الْكَذِبِ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ When they are lying, they will actually swear an oath knowing that they are lying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. That is a big crime. Imagine to use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to tell a lie if a person really wanted to tell a lie, which is very bad even without using the name of the Creator, the minimum is they shouldn't use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that lies is a form of hypocrisy. And if a person does not repent and leave lies, it will become hypocrisy that will be continuous in all other deeds. Why is lies hypocrisy? Because the interpretation of hypocrisy and nifaq in Islam is izhar ma laysa fil batin to show apparently that which is not inside so that's a lie the person's entire existence would be a lie that's a hypocrite so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that because a certain group of people had lied Allah says we wrote against their names and in their hearts hypocrisy until qiyamah and we will not guide them فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يَلْقَوْنَهُ بِمَا أَخْلَفُ اللَّهَ مَا وَعَدُوهُ وَبِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Allah says because of two things we have written hypocrisy on their hearts. One is they broke the promise they made with Allah and the other is they lied. So because of their lies and because of them breaking their promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have now declared them from amongst the hypocrites. Do you know what the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says? وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَكْذِبُ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا A person who lies will continue lying until he is written in the registers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. Imagine my name, your name. We would like to be known as the truthful. We would not like to be known as liars. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us even from the simplest of lies. The Quran speaks about how some people can lie to those whom they love. Some people will lie to their fathers, to their parents, to their family members. In Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the children of Yaqub alayhi salam, Jacob may peace be upon him, lied about Yusuf and Joseph may peace be upon him. وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيصِهِ بِدَمٍ كَذِبٍ Allah says they came with false blood on the shirt of Yusuf alayhi salam to show the father. And they had false tears. وَجَاءُوا أَبَاهُمْ عِشَاءً يَبْكُونَ 
they came literally crying to their father at night and they said oh our father we went racing and we did this and yusuf was eaten by a wolf and so on what a joke what a laugh what a lie may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and from that surah we learn something great we learn that if a parent is a pious humble noble person they will have an automatic feeling that my son is lying it's natural you can tell when your children are lying may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to do so but before that may he grant our children protection from lies allahu akbar because there's no point in making a dua ya allah let us be able to tell when our children are lying you rather start from the beginning and say ya allah let our children not be from amongst the liars allahu akbar so why do people lie that question is also answered in the quran why do people tell a lie in order to show that they are superior than others that is one of the reasons in order to show that they are better subhanallah a young boy comes to you and he races around the corner entering the masjid and you look at his car nice ferrari and he comes out like he's the best person on earth and he tells you i drove to Joburg in two hours <laughs> you know naturally this man is lying he is telling you a lie why is he lying he wants to show you i'm the best driver and there's no one who can compete with me no ways you know they were almost 29 speed traps but i've got a gadget that actually makes those people blind may allah protect us now you know this person just wants to show that he is superior it is this type of a lie that will destroy you why do you want to lie just remain where allah put you tell them look it's a lamborghini but i'm not so sure how to drive it be honest <laughs> then inshallah i can help you we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to grant us protection and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of truthfulness for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl, وَتَصْفُ أَلْسِنَتُهُمُ الْكَذِبَ أَنَّ لَهُمُ الْحُسْنَ A certain category of people who lied. Allah says, they are lying and they continue lying with their tongues. Their tongues describe that which is lies in order for them to have the goodness for themselves. So people need to lie. You know, someone asks you, what's your salary? So you say, look, it's none of your business. That's a good answer. Instead of saying, uh, somewhere in the hundreds of thousands. Wallahi, if that's the case, then give us some charity. May Allah protect us. So this is something we need to realize. Let's not lie. Tell the truth. Be honest. The mercy of Allah will descend upon you. Nowadays, we suffer a lot. And sometimes we don't realize that some of the reasons of us suffering is because we continue telling lies. We spread lies. And we don't realize we engaged in so many sins. The Quran reminds us of so many things. May Allah make us from those who can take heed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when it comes to liars and those who engage in falsehood, those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, they love to listen to lies as well. So you sit around the braai and mashallah, everybody is lying. You add to the lies and they come and they lie and you love to listen to it. Oh, that man, mashallah, hey, that's great news. And you know, it makes you excited. It's thin air. Really, it's nothing. Why must you get happy when others are lying? And this is very, very important information. If a person gets excited with the lies of someone else, they themselves have a problem of lying as well. Because if a person does not like to lie at all, naturally when someone says a lie, they will feel a distance between themselves and that person. Because they know, no, this person is not good company. And this is why also the Quran discusses the issue of abstaining from the company of a liar. Because when, the, when we are resurrected, we will, resurrect, we will be resurrected with those whom we used to be with in this world. And those whom we used to love to be in the company of. We don't want to be resurrected with the liars on the day of Qiyamah. When they are battling with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're standing right next to them as guilty as they are. We don't want that to happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Such people, they love to listen to lies. Then Allah says, Why, what makes a person love to listen to lies and to lie sometimes there is something wrong in their spirituality and where does a person's spirituality go wrong it can go wrong from many places when they have really when they have become a burden on their own family members it can destroy their spirituality when they are an unacceptable un-islamic burden it can become a problem and allah says when they are eating haram it also results in the same drop of spirituality and they become liars the Quran says they eat haram. Suht means haram. 
So these people love to listen to lies and they love to continue eating haram. May Allah grant us the ability to distinguish between what is right and wrong and protect us from haram sustenance, protect us from that which will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how a liar will continue changing his story. Look at the angles from which the Quran has discussed this. Who would have ever guessed that the Quran has so much depth on every topic that we want to pick up. The Quran says a person who's a liar, he will change his story and he will change the truth from where it is in order to suit him and in order to suit his whims and fancies. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And here Allah is speaking of the liars. It is the same verse wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the liars. Remember when we are discussing these topics every night, I have only picked up the topics where the word connected to the topic is made mention of in the Quran. Those are the only verses I'm picking up. So I'm not picking up other verses. If you haven't heard the word in the portion of the verse we've read, you should know it's slightly before it or slightly after it. Sometimes it's a bit too long to mention the whole verse. But the point is what we are trying to drive home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deep understanding. May he make us from those who can appreciate the fact that we are from the, the ummah and the nation of this Quran. What a blessed nation. What a blessed book. What a miracle. I promise you, if the Jews and the Christians and the non-Muslims had to know the blessings of the depth of the Quran, they would fight us in order to get to that particular book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance and grant them guidance as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks then about how a person who is a liar will get caught at some stage. They will get caught. You know, they will change their story. Come to you, change the story. When they are asked again, there's a little bit of a change in the story. When they ask there, there will be another change in the story. A liar will get caught, if not today, tomorrow. And when a person lies, the Quran says that they have a certain shackle on them. They are tied now. They will never taste happiness until they unshackle themselves from that particular lie. Therefore, it is my duty and yours to stop lying and to encourage others to be truthful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us truthfulness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, when that minister happened to see that the shirt of Yusuf السلام, was torn from behind, he looked at the women and he said, no, you people are at fault, you are the liars. He knew they were the liars. Why? Because there was a sign to prove the liars. May Allah protect us. And this is why later on in the same surah, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam had a chance to clarify his name. And they happened to say that we were the ones who had tried to lure this innocent man. Yusuf was actually innocent. And this is mentioned in the same surah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us. And he addresses us in many different ways telling us when someone says something, do not accuse them of lying until you test them and you know that they are telling a lie. Because then you also become a liar. You want to accuse innocent people of lies? That itself is falsehood. It is accusation which is even worse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Naml. When Sulaiman alayhi salam saw the hudhud or the hoopoo bird and the hoopoo bird came with some news and said, I've seen a certain lady who is worshipping the sun and so on, and she has a great kingdom and what have you. He didn't say you're a liar, but he doubted the story a little bit. So he said, Listen, O Hoopoo bird, I'm going to test you to see whether you are telling the truth or whether you are lying. We will find out just now. Take this letter of mine and go and give it to her and then see what happens. Now, if he was lying, if the bird was lying, naturally it wouldn't be able to come back. But the bird was telling the truth and the letter got there, subhanallah. So when your child comes back from school telling you a big story, 
You can test the child before you actually say, my son is a liar. And at the same time, if it is a story too big to digest, you need to remember, just verify it before you actually believe it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. I see the young boys are looking at me like I've said something very bad. No, it's just an example of a child. But this can happen when the adults also give you news in a bigger way because you wouldn't expect them to lie. And I think the bigger disease and the bigger disaster is when big people lie, when old people lie, when very old people lie. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood and may he make us from amongst those who are truthful at all times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in Surah Al-Ankabut that Allah himself is going to test every single one of us, every single one of us, whether we are truthful or whether we are liars. Listen to what he says in the opening verses of Surah Al-Ankabut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, we have tested all those before, and Allah is going to test every single one of us in order to know who is truthful and who are liars regarding their belief in Allah. Isn't it every one of us declares that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger? Do we just say it by our tongues or do we believe it? Allah says we are going to test you to see if you are liars or to see if you are truthful. May we be from amongst those whom when we are tested, we come out with flying colors of truthfulness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that a liar, the punishment of a liar will be served to the liar himself. If someone comes to you with lies, then that particular lies will harm whom? It will harm them in terms of sin. But if we go ahead and believe that lie, then naturally we will also be affected depending on what type of news and information it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ghafir that there was a man who accepted Islam from the family of Fir'aun. And he told his people, he said, look, this man is coming with news. If he is telling you the truth, then punishment will overtake you. And if he is lying, his lies will overtake him and it will be a means of his own destruction. If he is telling a lie, then the lie will return to him as a sin and not to every one of us. But listen to what he is saying at least. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to listen to the good message and to take heed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks of another quality of liars. May Allah protect us. Wallahi, it is so true. A liar thinks that everyone else is also a liar. It's a fact. Why? Because when you come up with news, if someone tells you, look, I made it to Johannesburg in two hours. Okay, you know it's a lie. Unless it's obviously by aircraft. And then you end up telling them, well, you know what? I made it in 10 hours. They still think you're lying. May Allah protect us all. They still think you're lying because they lied. So a person who has that guilt will always feel that others are similar. So they will suffer because really it is a disease. When someone lies, what happens? The Quran tells us that they think everyone else is a liar because they cannot distinguish between what is right and wrong anymore. They've lost the power to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from lies. This is the disease. And this is why there is a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked a few questions. That whether a Muslim commits this sin and that sin, and he said, look, maybe this sin, maybe that sin, a Muslim can repent for this one and for that one. Then he was asked, does a Muslim lie? And he says, Al-Mu'minu la yakdim. A true believer never ever lies. There's no reason for you to lie. Why do you want to lie? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood and lies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud about the liars, وَمَا نَرَى لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِن فَضْلٍ بَلْ نَظُنُّكُمْ كَاذِبِينَ When the messengers came to them, the liars, they looked at the messengers and said, there's no virtue for you above us. We think you people are liars because they themselves were liars. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the messengers told them, Nuh alayhi salam told his people who told him that he was a liar, he told them, Hang on. 
we, we wait we shall see who is the liar here and whom the punishment will come upon and wallahi the punishment came upon them and at that time it was too late they were ta overtaken by a flood and every single one of them was destroyed may allah never ever do that to us then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about another quality of the liars the liars they love to disunite the what is known as jama'atul muslimin the liars they love to disunite the muslim community and they will swear to you that they intend goodness listen to what the quran says about certain people who decided to build a masjid right next to masjid quba in order to split the community the reason for building that masjid was in order to divide the muslims and destroy them and then they went out and they made oaths and promises that no wallahi we intended goodness listen to what allah says about them وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا بَيْنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِرْصَادًا وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَلَيَحْلِفُنَّ إِنْ أَرَدْنَا إِلَّا الْحُسْنَى Wallahu yashhadu innahum lakadhibun Allah says there was a group of people who were liars and they came out and they built another masjid in order to destroy the Muslims and they started swearing oaths saying that wallahi our intentions are noble we just wanted convenience for the elderly and for those who can't make it then Allah says Allah knows that they are liars may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection so now there is something very dangerous. I told you moments ago about the wolf. If a man, and you, I'm sure you all know the story of the wolf, where the shepherd called out just to test the people, to say, wolf, wolf, and everybody came. But there was no wolf. And he says, look, I was just testing you. And the next time he said, wolf, wolf, all the people came. No, I was just testing you. You're a good community. The third time the wolf came, finished. When he said, wolf, wolf, nobody came. They thought he's just testing us. And then the wolf ate all his sheep. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah says, you must never accept the witness of a liar, a person whom it has been proven that they've lied. If you are to accept their witness, you are always going to be in the wrong direction and you may be led astray. Someone has lied to you so many times or they've lied to you even once, a serious lie. Can you believe them again? There's only one condition. They need to repent openly. They need to declare their repentance to the one whom they've lied to. Look, I'm sorry, I lied to you. And may Allah forgive me. Then you can accept their statement again because now they are showing remorse. They've changed their ways and habits. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us change our bad ways and habits. This is the month of Ramadan. It's not impossible. It's not impossible to change our ways and habits. But as we are exiting the month of Ramadan, there's one thing we need to remember. And I might say this a few times in this month of Ramadan. When we are closing down our computer or when we are switching off, if we forget to save the changes, what happens? Our, our document is gone. We might have suffered preparing something so big, but we did not save changes. What happens with us as a Muslim ummah? We come out of the month of Ramadan without saving changes. So we get back to where we were before Ramadan. We start all over again. So inshallah, this time we need to save all the changes inshallah. Remember, before you switch off, save your changes. You know how irritating it is when the power cuts and suddenly the computer's gone and everything's gone and you look at yourself and you say, you know what, I heard about a UPS, uninterrupted power supply. Why didn't I get that? Well, we need spiritual uninterrupted power. Allahu Akbar. And it's something really that we need to think about. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how their witness must never be accepted unless they accept, unless they repent. And Allah says this in Surah An-Nur. Allah says, don't ever accept their witness. They are from amongst the liars unless they have repented to Allah. For indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from his mercy and forgive all our sins. Then Allah says, 
who is a liar a person who now lies serious lies when we say serious lies we're talking of where another human being is involved all lies are serious but some of them are more serious why do we say more serious when a person lies a little white lie it's a serious lie in islam as a good muslim you shouldn't be doing that but if you've involved a third party spreading accusation rumor spreading falsehood about someone else allah cannot forgive you until that person forgives you so it's a much more serious lie you need to go to them and say listen brother i spread lies about you until and unless you don't do that there's no ways you're going to be forgiven you know i know of some people who've shown me a book written by some scholars and they say here's a dua that you must make if you keep on reading it then if you've engaged in backbiting or rumor or slander about someone else allah will forgive you i told him listen brother listen sister you know what that is nonsense there is nothing like that there is nothing at all like that to say you can just read a dua after slandering people you open the book and say right let me read the dua if that was the case we would all be slandering everyone every day spreading rumor and lies about everyone then at night quickly take the book from under the pillow read it and you spiritually cleanse then go and sleep islam is not a joke it's a way of life that has no loopholes not even one loophole if you have wronged someone you will pay for it unless they have forgiven you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and this is why it is important that we seek forgiveness from people sometimes we don't even realize how we've wronged people but let us not be so small-minded that we hold against others even things that they haven't done really sometimes people are so small-minded a person couldn't greet them because they didn't see them on the road and they stopped talking to this person for one year why that day you didn't greet me but i didn't see you allahu akbar or maybe i did but i was so busy or maybe i waved but you didn't see my hand Allahu Akbar. So sometimes we become so petty that we begin to hate others for reasons that are not even worth mentioning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the devil and from shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a person who lies is a person who does not really have proper iman. There, there is something wrong with their iman. Because what is iman? Iman is the belief in the heart that you are going to be answerable completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of qiyamah. That's part of our iman. So if a person is lying, they've forgotten that they are going to return to Allah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nahl, إِنَّمَا يَفْتَرِ الْكَذِبَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ Definitely those who lie, they are the ones who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have iman. They don't believe in the life after death. Allah says they are the liars. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues saying, In Surah Ghafir, He says, It is those who deny our verses and signs who lie. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from lies. Another very important issue that is discussed in the Quran is that sometimes the liars, they lie about pious people they lie about good people they lie about prophets who are innocent of what these people are uttering and the lies and allah says they will definitely be punished because of what they are uttering if any one of us happens to lie about one of the ulama or happens to make the life of a friend of allah difficult there is no ways that our life will continue to remain in ease allah will create difficulty for us because if i if myself or yourselves have to create difficulty for a friend of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you think that creator is going to sit back and relax immediately you will start feeling turbulence in your life you will feel the lack of contentment you will feel your boat rock the way forward is to go back to that person and seek forgiveness to say look i wronged you and really i seek forgiveness my life has been a mess ever since i did what i did may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all so allah says about aisha radiallahu anha in surah an-nur that she was accused she was accused of committing adultery and this is why whenever you hear a rumor of someone going out with someone or someone having an affair with someone be very very careful the quran tells us a true muslim and a true mu'min won't even get involved it does not concern you unless obviously it is your daughter or your wife or your mother may allah protect all of our offspring and family members but it does not concern you make dua for them 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the true believers and he says, لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ قُلْتُمْ مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا أَن نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا سُبْحَانَكَ هَذَا بُهْتَانٌ عَظِيمٌ When you hear such an accusation, and the true believers, what do they do or what should they have done? They should be from amongst those who say, Nay, we don't even want to talk about this. It's a big lie and a fabrication. May Allah protect us all. That's a sign of Iman. So when you hear this gossip and that gossip, be careful because, do you know what Allah says? If you have spoiled your tongue by gossip and slander and false accusation and falsehood and lies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says every single one of them who had spread the falsehoods shall taste the punishment. They will have a portion of the punishment and the one who created the falsehood will have a huge torment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from falsehood. This is the age of gossip. Believe me, we are suffering across the globe a disease, especially amongst the Muslims, of gossip. We used to think it was only amongst the women, but sadly, the men have become bigger professionals in gossip. We love to listen to stories and we love to spread rumor about others and we will phone people and we will just find out what's the latest news about that man and this woman and what happened here and there and we will make use of our telecom minutes. I spoke about them a few days ago. 59 whole minutes they say. If you have a certain pack, if you have a certain package, 59 minutes you speak for free. Please don't go and find out what's that package. It won't help you. A telephone is a tool which I, myself and yourselves should be using when it is needed. It's not just there to waste time. Wallahi, it is a tool that we need to use. Allah is going to ask us how we used it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the, I told you the pious have been accused and they have been accused of lying. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the kuffar looked at him and they said, In hadha illa ifkun iftarahu wa a'anahu alayhi qawmun akharun. They said this Quran is a lie. May Allah protect us. They said this Quran is fabricated and he has cheated. He went to others and he just brought it. He wrote it down and came with it. Look how they are calling the most truthful a liar. Look how they are accusing him of falsehood. Would they ever succeed? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah grant us every form of goodness. Let me inform you of something. If you look at the book of Sirah, the books of Sirah and the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all those who have directly damaged the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's reputation, or should I say try to damage, because no one can damage it, but try to damage it directly. They were not given guidance later on. It's only those who had that little quality of humbleness in them. Even if they fought the Muslims, but they never ever got beyond a certain point. They were the ones who were guided. Like Umar ibn al-Khattab, like Khalid ibn al-Walid, radiyallahu anhum jami'a. These people, they might have been enemies of Islam at one stage, but they did not cross a certain threshold. Whereas when it comes to Abu Lahab, when it comes to Abu Jahl, they crossed a threshold. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed them. Once a person is cursed, they can do what they want. They won't get guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever curse us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how even Musa alayhi salatu was salam was called a liar by Fir'aun. Because Fir'aun himself was a liar. Yesterday we heard that Fir'aun called himself a god. And he told his, his uh, man, Haman, to build him a ladder going up to the heavens to see the god of Moses of Musa alayhi salatu was salam and he says inni la adunnuhu kathiba I definitely feel that Musa is telling a lie and he knew that that was the truth Allah says Fir'aun knew it was the truth but he wants to con his people so he is saying that you know what Musa is a liar I think he's a liar he's telling us a lie may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from such evil company and Allah tells us all and Allah tells us as well as those who want to lie. Allah says in Surah Al-An'am, 
قل سيروا في الأرض فانظروا كيف كان عاقبة المكذبين. Say, travel on the earth and go and see how we have dealt with the liars. Both those who've died and those who are alive. People who are serial liars, they don't have happiness in their lives. They are leading double and triple and quadruple lives. They need to have a face this side, a face that side, a face the other side. Just be honest and you will see even your health will improve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Really, it's the truth. It's from Allah. It's from the creator. The one who made me and you is telling us, you want happiness, you want good health, you want spirituality, you want contentment. Stop lying. Just be truthful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all truthfulness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that liars will first have a punishment in the dunya and then in the akhirah. لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيٌ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Speaking about the liars, Allah says He will disgrace them at some stage in the dunya. You know when a liar has built an empire of lies, then what happens? One day when they are disgraced, they got to put their head down and they got to walk disgraced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever do that to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how they shall be punished on the day of Qiyamah and in the Akhirah. And what we'd like to mention here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the regret of a liar. On the day of Qiyamah, the liar will say, Ya Allah, send me back. I want to be from amongst the truthful. Send me back, Ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even in that statement, they are lying. They're saying, if you send us back, we will tell the truth. Allah says, no. Even if we sent them back so many times, they would still lie and they would still come back. Because lies is like a cancer. When a person does not cut it off completely, it spreads through the whole body and it will continue and it continues into generations. You know, if the father is a big liar, the son will start at a young age. May Allah protect us. Really. You see what happens normally is those parents who are close to their children, sometimes their job and their employment and their field is brushed off onto the children and the children will do it better than them you have a doctor sometimes you'll have one of the children being a better doctor than the father you have a plumber you have a child who's a better plumber than the father you have an architect the child at times is a better architect you have an alim the child sometimes knows a bit more may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all knowledge inshallah but you have a liar i don't even want to say what will happen may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from lies inshallah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about their regret and Allah says وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَانُهُ عَنْهُ وَإِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ In Surah Al-An'am Allah says if they were to return back to the earth they would repeat their same ways and habits and they are liars. They are born bred liars. May Allah protect us all. And Remember, our, ha our hearts are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how, how is it that a person will not come out of lies when his heart is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The truth is, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Whoever struggles to come close to us or to adopt our ways, we will open the doors for that person only. You want, you must try your best to get up for Fajr. Try to come for Isha. Try to go for the Salah. Try to fulfill your Salah. Try to be truthful. Then Allah will open the doors. But you can't just sit and say, look, if Allah has written it for me, then naturally I will be at the Masjid. We are not one of those dervishes who suddenly fly on a flying carpet from where we are and land here and there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Because if that was the case, I'd like you to do me one favor. The time of food, sit where you are. Say, if food is written for me, it will come. Would you ever do that? No. Why? Because food is too important. My belly will make me stand up and walk. So our spirituality must make us stand up and go to the masjid, inshallah. And our spirituality must make us be better people, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about the fact that it is the right of a person who catches a liar to punish him in one way or another. Look in Surah Yusuf, very interestingly, Yusuf alayhi salam, he caught the liar. You know, there was a plan that was hatched. It's not our topic today. But his brother was the one who was found to be a liar. And that was a plan by him. 
immediately the other brothers who were even bigger liars they happened to ask him a question fama jazauhu in kuntum kadhibin this question was posed by more than one party and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it here what is the recompense of the liar what is the recompense of the liar or yusuf alayhi salam asked them what how should i punish the one from amongst you who is lying they themselves said you can take him and keep him and imprison him here allahu akbar which means you can actually imprison a liar now we are not going to imprison people who might lie to us but we can stop talking to them we can tell them we are unhappy with them that itself is a punishment we can tell them listen they should stop lying we can abstain from their company that is a punishment if they are our children we can reprimand them and we can reprimand them in a good decent positive way not that you pick up a stick and start whacking them that doesn't have the effect you need nowadays the most favorite toy take it away for three days believe me they'll stop lying inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us methods which are effective with our children so that we can be positive parents rather than pick up the stick and beat our children that is not the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he never ever beat any child though he said a father has the right at a certain point to serve that particular punishment but that point is a very far point that point is very very far we if we use the stick it is a sign of lack of intellect we don't have brains enough and patience enough to think of a method that will convince our own children we want to use a stick that's a quick way out and that will make the child violent and it will make the child erupt and possibly even corrupt because the child will lie to you fear of the stick may allah protect us so we will be promoting lies you know when a child sees a stick and you say did you do it what will they say no and they know they did it allahu akbar because of the stick so that stick will actually result in making your children worse be careful of the stick you might hang it but when you if you are to use it very very rarely once in a blue moon and i never ever see blue moons so Really, we need to learn a lesson. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the best of the dunya and the akhirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this Quran that sometimes when it comes to knowledge and the majority, the majority do not stand any weight or do not hold, should I say, any weight. The knowledge holds weight. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says, if you are to follow the majority on the globe, they will lead you astray from the right path. Why? Because they are following their whims and fancies and they are lying the word khars means to lie to guess may allah protect us so this is something very important if for example we were to vote whether gays and lesbians are something good or something bad there is a chance that the majority of people might say it's something good does it make it good in the eyes of allah even if the whole world says it's good it will remain bad because knowledge comes before majority yes you can use the majority to select between two correct things but you cannot use the majority to select between right and wrong because right will always be right even if nobody sees it as right besides you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability to distinguish between right and wrong and to understand when majority applies and when it holds no value at all May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. I told you the Quran has no loopholes. You cannot apply and implement the Quran and arrive at a mistake. That's impossible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this particular Quran and in Surah Al-Ma'idah that when people lie about you, don't let it hurt you. And when people lie, don't become depressed. They are liars. Allah will expose them at some stage. And this was the message to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يا أيها الرسول لا يحزنك الذين يسارعون في الكفر من الذين قالوا آمنا بأفواههم ولم تؤمن قلوبهم. O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
Don't allow those who are uttering that they are believers by their tongues but their hearts have not believed. Don't let that lies of theirs sadden you. No. Allah will expose them. It will be against them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us sad when people lie about us. We are weak. We are insane. We are human beings. Sometimes people lie about us. It affects us. It affects us a lot. But remember, there is a good reason why Allah has let that happen to you. And Allah will elevate your status. Don't worry and don't despair. You should know your standing between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the biggest lie that was ever said. The biggest lie that was ever said since the time creation began. What was that lie? I give you a moment to think. The biggest lie that could ever have been uttered and that was uttered. And it is the most dangerous lie. Even the skies want to explode because of that lie. And even the earth wants to crumble because of that lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in many places in the Quran. And he says in Surah Al-Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala innahum min ifkihim la yaquluna walad Allah. How can they lie and say that the Creator has a son? How can Allah have a child? Allah doesn't have a wife. How can Allah ever have a child? Allah says, the skies want to explode, the earth wants to crumble, and all the creatures would, would be destroyed completely. They cannot tolerate that lie. Allah says it is the biggest lie that was ever created, the lie against the Creator Himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We believe Allah has no sons, no daughters, no father, no mother. None does He have. He does not beget, nor was He begotten. Allahu Akbar. He is the supreme creator. None is equivalent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a big lie. And this brings us to a point where we are involved. That if anyone lies about Allah and his messenger, the hadith says, مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ They have already reserved their place in Jahannam. May Allah protect us. We should never lie about Allah. We must never lie about the messenger. If there is a hadith which people are quoting, which we find out is not correct, stop quoting it. We need to be from amongst those who authenticate before we utter what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has uttered. People email you an email and say the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wasallam be careful don't lie because the biggest lies are those against Allah and his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The hadith clearly says a person who wants to tell those type of lies they have already reserved their place. You know when you catch a flight and you say, I'd like this seat. You've already confirmed your seat number. Allah says, that seat number of Jahannam is confirmed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never do that to us. Then I'd like to mention one or two final points as we are ending. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. When a person accuses his wife of having committed a sin, meaning adultery, that is a very, very serious accusation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us all to say, you better be careful what you say. Every single one of us. The accusation of adultery is also one of the biggest accusations you can level against your fellow human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what is known as li'an in surat an-nur, where the two must get together if they don't have witnesses, and the husband must utter what he saw. And he must say, may the curse of Allah be upon me if I'm a liar. Listen to that statement, which means the curse of Allah will be upon the liars. Then the wife must utter, may the anger of Allah be upon myself if he is telling the truth. Allahu Akbar. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. It is something very serious, but it is a way of resolving the crisis. And it is a way of solving the matter. And Allah says, neither of them will be punished. But that li'an itself, that accusation when it is made in the presence of the court or in the presence of the panel of ulama, it naturally becomes a talaq and a separation to the degree that the two of them can never ever get back together in their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from accusing others and may Allah never make us go through that type of a condition. Then there is a point connected to this where when people are telling a big lie, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who say that Jesus is the son of God. Allah says to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if they can continue with that lie, which is the most serious lie you could ever have, then what you need to do, call them 
and tell them that I call you to what is known as mubahala. Mubahala is when there is lies that you cannot get to the bottom of, right? What you do, you tell the other party, bring your children and I will bring my children. Bring your women folk, I will bring my women folk. We stand one party facing the other and we invoke the curse of Allah upon the one party that is lying. Say, Ya Allah, curse us if we are lying. Allahu Akbar. That is known as a mubahala. So sometimes when there is a lie, there is no bottom of it. You know you are truthful. You might want, it's a very serious issue, but if the community is involved, something very big is at stake, then you may want to call for what is known as a mubahala, which means both parties must curse themselves if they are lying. And you will know the punishment of Allah will descend immediately upon those who are lying because it's not easy to say, Ya Allah, curse me, punish me, and I invoke your wrath on me if I am telling a lie. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us truthful without ever having to utter those type of words. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.